Hey everyone, Mike Clark here, and today I thought I'd have a little fun. Uh, I don't know about you all, but uh, while I've had, I, during this uh, shutdown, I certainly have some positive habits. Uh, one habit that I'm maybe not so proud of is I'm drinking a little bit more wine than, than I usually do. So I thought it'd be a little fun to have a little wine tasting and no better per person to do it with than Mark Bullock, who's the restaurant manager of 1818 Chop House here in O'Fallon. How you doing, Mark? I'm doing good, yourself? I'm good, I'm cheers. good. Let's yeah. cheers again. Let's do it again. Real cheers. I like it, I like it. Also, the reason why Mark is here is because he is uh, a sommelier, also called a som, yes, right? Sir. Yeah. So before we get started, we're gonna be tasting four wines and I'm gonna let him tell you all about the wine. Why wine? Why did you get into wine? I mean, fermented grapes, why not? It tastes <laughs> good, it pairs well with food. Yeah. It's something you can have every day. I think it's good for you in moderation. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it's a communal thing, right? For sure. Except for right now. I think a lot of people are doing it alone. But, yeah. you know, that's why we're going to do it virtually today. Yeah, for sure. Have a little fun. And by the way, for everyone, we are six feet apart, yes. right? So it, it, we are following the rules. So um, what do we have up first, Mark? All right. First one we have up is a Riesling from Clare Valley in Australia. So like we were talking about before, common misconception with Rieslings is that they're all sweet and that's due to, you know, residual sugar that can be left in wine. So okay. this first one, um, you know, it has a clear marker kind of on the nose like we smelled before. It's got that rubber petrol like garden hose kind of tennis ball smell, right? <laughs> that's like, a, first off, yeah. tennis ball, garden, hole, uh, garden hose, Chemically petro is yes. what, and yes. it does, it is like that. It is, yeah, yeah. And so that's a good, um, it's a good thing. That's a good indicator that you're about to drink these things. If, you right. smell that. if it's good quality, <laughs> yeah. Right. So anyways, uh, this first one here, yeah, this is uh, probably different from most Rieslings you've ever had. I'm yeah. yeah. What do I you will think? say that whenever I ever, ha when I've ever had a Riesling, it's my mom or someone in the, in the family, and it's just insanely sweet, yeah. not my thing at all. Yeah. But we had this a little bit ago, and it's actually amazing. Yeah, it's good. You could just sit and drink this on the patio mm -hmm. uh, all summer, uh, for sure. Um, I mean, and you can tell it's like uh, lower in alcohol just by tasting it. You know, you're not getting that burn. I think this is only, yeah, we're at 11, 11 and a half percent. 11 and a half percent. Yeah. So and why can, is this different than the other Rieslings? Um, well, I mean. Why is it not as sweet, I guess? Yeah, so that's something that happens when you're making wine. So. Um, basically alcohol is sugar right and so when you're fermenting wine um, the fermentation process is eating up the sugar and then they can choose to stop it at a certain point right so you might have you know so many grams per liter of residual sugar left this is an example where you let all that just get eaten completely um, so yeah you're gonna have no residual sugar versus I'm sure some of the other ones you've had you know that are insane over sweet. Yeah. sweet yeah yeah, yeah. And it's still fruity. I mean, when you taste this wine, it's uh, it's got a lot of citrus off the note. It's mm -hmm. ripe. It's a fruity wine, but it's not sweet. You know, mm -hmm. it's really dry, crisp after finish. So that's that's uh, the kind of reasons I liked for sure. So, quick question for you. We, I just kind of threw out there sommelier, but what exactly does that mean, and what is that? Hmm. I mean, in the broadest sense of a term, you're a you're a wine steward, right? Your your job is to help. Um, guide the guest, answer any questions, um, offer wine pairings with food. Um, yeah. I mean, nowadays, um, you know, anything goes, I guess, but there's some like classic examples that you should try and stick to and follow for sure. Uh -huh. um, you know, uh, wines that are a little sweeter help kind of offset um, spicier foods. Um, obviously, California cabs are king. Uh, in steakhouses like we have downstairs mm -hmm. uh, for my favorite by so, yeah, yeah you know just kind of those those general things those you know lighter lighter skin reds like pinot noirs tend to uh, um, pair well with salmon and things like that which is kind of like a you know a medium flavored fish right? gotcha yeah yeah what so, about rieslings what would you pair a riesling with oh nothing and everything <laughs> yeah nothing and everything yeah. okay. i mean i'll just i'll just straight drink them yeah, uh, all right. That's usually that's the American way, right? Yeah, that's, that's how I, I tend to. Well, it's going to really depend on uh, you know I like my rieslings with uh, fish. I like them with chartreuse. Well, I mean, I just I drink a lot of riesling. You know? Okay. I yeah. am I am not a, um, a stickler when it comes to food pairing. Mm -hmm. Although when you do have you know wine that is uh, coming from a certain region that is paired with food from that region, 
um, it usually is going to end up being the best combination. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so is this your favorite? Did you say that? No, it's not my favorite. Okay. It's, it's uh, um, I mean, I'm more partial to station reasons. I just want to bring this. Yeah. I bet like, my car hasn't tried this before. <laughs> no, yeah. I'm not. I'm yeah. not. Yeah, so the next one, if we want to Yeah, roll let's right move on to the next here. one. We all start out, uh, when we start drinking, we all drink something different as, as our first drink. And we're not going to go into when we started drinking, nothing like that. And this is not a point of pride for me, but I hated beer when I first started drinking. <laughs> like, hated it. Peppermint schnapps is my the first, like, thing that I started drinking. I would just drink it straight, which is really gross. I couldn't imagine doing that today. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. It's, yeah. yeah, but what, what was your, what was the first thing you ever uh, drank consistent? Well, so I grew up in a very uh, closed family environment. So we had aunts and uncles and grandmas and grandpas all on the same road. So I'm from uh, oh. a city called Kelowna, British Columbia. So this is like a, a kind of right north of Seattle, I guess. And then we okay. A little bit inland. So we had a lot of wine at family events. And so, you know, grandpa who was from Austria or my grandma who was from uh, Germany, you know, they would always pour the kids a little bit of wine. Yeah. Uh, you know, it didn't matter if we were nine years old. So that was probably the first thing that I ever, I definitely had, you know? Um, and then after that, obviously beer is a. Yeah. My dad was pouring me a little bit of bush light. I think at, at times. All right. I'm pulling this one off to the side. All right. And we're moving on to the next one. So, I'm sure you've had Pinot Grigio before, mm -hmm. right? So this is the same grape. It's called Pinot Gris, but it's from Alsace. In it's France. from Alsace? Alsace in France, yeah. Okay. So um, totally different expression of the same grape. Um, you can obviously see by the color how it's got this kind of like more ambered color. Mm -hmm. For uh, sure. That grape actually, Pinot Grigio is like a gray grape. It's not a true red or a true white. It's, you know, like a... It's in the family of Pinot Noir. That's basically what it, what it comes from. So this, um, give it a whirl. It's going to be totally different from what we just had. Cheers. Cheers. Again. So can I say, I see people do this. What, what does this do? Yeah, that kind of just like... Because uh, I don't know it, what I'm doing. It when aerates I the wine. Okay. So it's going to get a little bit of oxygen, oxygen to it, which is going to push the flavors out of the glass and allow you to smell it a little better. So can really I say that this smells buttery to me? Does that make sense? It's like a little deeper and richer, right? And when yeah. I, so if anyone doesn't know, I don't know anything about wine. So whenever I, that's kind of what I, why I want to do this. I don't know anything about wine. Yeah. He's the expert. So I'm definitely not the expert. Oh, he, all right. You are, but that's okay. <laughs> so what do you smell? I mean, coming out of this, the wine's not, not very aromatic. It's not really yeah. like jumping out of the glass. You know what I mean? It's For sure. Like pretty tempered. It's got that nice gold hue. It doesn't have a whole lot of rim variation going on. If you're swirling it in the glass and you're looking at the legs that kind of start to form. Okay. Um, they're there, they're forming, they're coming down. So I'm going to say this is probably like a, you know, moderate plus alcohol level, like 14%. So, so let me back up because uh, all of this is like, you know, this stuff so well, how can you tell again? Uh, I, I know you just said it. How can you tell the, the, the likely amount of alcohol by the legs? Can well, I mean, alcohol, that a bit? yeah, alcohol is just sugar, right? Okay. So like your, your biggest, um, you know, say like a really high alcohol wine, like an Amarone from Italy, which is going to be probably pushing, you know, like 16% or something like that, you know, it's going to be viscous. So, you know, that is, that is really just going to draw slow, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, the, the quicker the tears are running, kind of the less alcohol okay. it's going to be in the wine. Just think of it as like sugar water. Right. I mean, yeah. That's essentially what we're Makes talking sense. about. Yeah. 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 So that's kind of, you know, you know, those are all things when you go through, you know, like hopefully next year I'll do my certified exam. So I'll get blind tasted on two reds, two whites, and you'll have to deduce, you know, the wines, where they're from, the age, the grape, the country of origin, the appellation. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. And so, yeah, you have a whole grid that you kind of go through. And that's just kind of part of the deductive. Interesting. Tasting method, you know. Not to put you on the spot, but how many sommeliers are there out there in the United States? Master sommeliers? Uh, there is, sure. Yeah. I think there is a hundred and something masters in okay. the U.S. And there's 200 and something in the world. And so that's through the quartermaster sommeliers. And then you have through the uh, Institute of Master of Wines, you have somebody who's called the Master of Wine, which is, you know, equally as hard, but, you know, academically is a much more arduous process to go through. Okay. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, it's a pretty like close circle and, and tough to, to get at. So the right. next level that I'll go for would be certified. After that, if you want to become an advanced song, you have to go do a, uh, like a pretest to even qualify to apply for the, the advanced exam. So what do you, what do you taste uh, whenever you, whenever you taste this? So yeah, let me give it a whirl. I've never actually uh, tasted this, this uh, producer before. I've obviously had this grape plenty of times for my own stuff. So um, I have a good idea what's going to come. Yeah, it's got good minerality for sure, you know. Um, Can I say uh, the swooshing uh, just aerates the wine? Aerates the wine, okay. Hits your, hits your whole palate. So you taste that honey, a little bit of flavor. Yeah, I do taste a little honey. I, I didn't catch that until you said it, but as yeah. soon as you said it, it made perfect sense. Yeah, so that's going to come from um, probably a slight bit of botrytis that happened on this wine. A slight bit of what? Botrytis, it's called noble rot. So if you ever have, like, you ever have an ice wine before? Ice wine? Yeah. No? Um, you know, like sweet wines, like dessert oh, wines. Oh, yeah, like yeah, 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 yeah. So, so noble rot, yeah, is something that uh, basically starts eating at and shriveling the grape, and it concentrates the sugars. Okay. And it's going to give you that kind of honeyed aftertaste in this. And this isn't fully like a full dessert wine, but this definitely has a little bit of botrytis that's going on. I like it. That's giving that. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. This is another sit on the patio all day, drink it. Um, Alcohol is a little higher, so. Okay. Yeah. So maybe not all day. Proceed but. with caution. Yeah. <laughs> right. Good books, some good music mm -hmm. on a nice uh, relaxing day. Mm -hmm. The weather's nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. So totally different from like an Italian Pinot Grigio. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think if you're going to have something from like. It's a, got like a, uh, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, but it's almost like a, an aftertaste that really sticks with you way mm -hmm. more than the reason. Oh yeah. Coach your mouth a little bit. It's really round. The yeah. 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 Where that is crisp and really. Like, and it's bang. Hitch in and it's done. Right. This one lingers. Yeah. Yeah. If you have like um, Pinot Gris from like uh, Willamette in Oregon. It's going to be like lighter in color, like more, more white. Um, but it's going to have that more like full body feel kind of like this. It's going to be kind of in between the Italian and this. You know, okay. If you could say that, I guess. But yeah. Yeah. Nice. So it's not a Pinot uh, Grigio. It is a Pinot, Pinot Gris. Yeah. Gris. So it's the exact same grape. Okay. Yeah. And how, do, how do we spell that? It's uh, G-R-I-S. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So Gris or Grigio just means gray. So I have to ask, how much um, is that Riesling for a bottle? Oh, roughly. I couldn't. I'd have to look it up. I think yeah. it's like 30, 40 bucks. Okay. Maybe. So nothing crazy. Yeah, nothing crazy. Yeah. And what about the one we just tried? I think that was like 25, 30 bucks. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I couldn't remember. I just grab and swipe. Yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I, I hear you. I yeah. can only imagine. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, no, this is nice. Definitely. Especially coming up on the summer. I think uh, if you haven't tried any of these things before, um, give them a whirl. You know, yeah. You're not going to go wrong. Uh, guys, I've asked him about wine and I'm kind of expecting like a quick response and the dude goes on for five minutes. And Sorry about that. No, <laughs> it's not. It's, I mean, it's awesome because you're passionate about yeah. it, you know, and that, that's, that's awesome. That's what I love. Yeah. It's very cool. Yeah. I feel like I got bit by the bug a little late in life, you know? You know what? Better but, late than, 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 than never, you know? Is, yeah. This would be something to have a barbecue. Okay. This is from Mike's. Mike sent me a picture today and he was like, pick what you want. Yeah. And so, I'm going to pour this for you here. And I'll have a little nip of this. Do you find people are typically red only, white only, or a lot of, do people kind of bounce around a little bit? I mean, I think more of the casual drinker is more um, like red only because we do it so well in the U.S. We okay. Do, I think like 90% of the wine gets drank within like a day of purchase and California calves can be drank well. So young, um, obviously the U S is pretty big on eating red meat. So, I mean, that's, I mean, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. just it. You know, I reach for them all the time too. Yeah. They're approachable. They're crown pleasers. Um, they're not going to have, you know, some, you know, barnyard funk off the nose, like some of the more old world wines are, you know, mm -hmm. it's a little bit, you know, or tempered because of the climate and winemaking style yeah. and kind of way that we do things. But yeah, I mean, 
yeah, I feel like a, a lot of people kind of maybe get stuck in that rut of that California cab and there's a whole nother like world of awesome stuff up there, you know, so. Like, well, I know that I'm, I'm in that place and, and Mark's done a great job of trying to show me various things, whether it be from Tempaneo, Tempaneo. From, Tempaneo group, yeah. Yeah, from yeah, Spain, from Spain yeah. and just yeah. all these things because I've, I'm new to it. I love cab, but need to need to try different things. Yeah. So I'm trying that. A yeah, little nothing's bit. wrong with cab. I mean, it's my one of my top five. So yeah, great for sure. So what we got here first? We got to do this. So yeah, we got to cheers again. Yeah, yeah. So what do you smell? Tell me. We're speaking of barbecue, right? Spice. Like yeah. I smell some spice. That's good. Yeah. Pepper. Yeah, for sure. A little bit of leather. <laughs> Once again, like I would have never thought that, but now that you yeah. say it, yeah. A little bit of cured meat. I don't know about cured meat. That one has me a little worried. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I do the leather. Yeah, yeah, for leather sure. Leather and pepper is what I smell. And again, what is this one? Yeah, so, well, this is yours. No, I'm not, but yeah, I don't know how to this pronounce it. You know? So this is from uh, Cote de Rhone, so from the Rhone uh, Valley in France. And so this is from the southern part of that valley. So you're going into more of like a Mediterranean climate, getting a little hotter, you know. Yeah. Um, and so this is a GSM blend. So that's Grenache, Syrah, and Vedra. So that Grenache is where you're in the Syrah is where you're pulling out a lot of those okay. descriptors that you just gave. And so obviously, you know, it smells like that. It's going to complement those types of meats well. Speaking of barbecue, smoking things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's and I would say this is, from memory, this is about $25. Yeah. And yeah. that was part of me trying some from, from France and from Italy was a, uh, your recommendation, but just, I'm not going to try something that's expensive and yeah. not like it. So yeah. That's St. Cosme, that, that Chateau Neuf de Pop that you've got, this is going to be, you know, kind of along that line. So okay. Yeah. That, yeah. Be similar. Right down the road. This is definitely more up my alley. <sighs> yeah. 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 It's so, good, right. You're doing that with your mouth, yeah. and that is because of the tannins. Is that right? Yeah. So it's gonna. So go. explain that. So because we all know what that what that feeling is when you have a yeah. So tannins are just, um, you know, if you're looking at say like a Pinot Noir, which I think we have one we'll try later, mm -hmm. versus a Cabernet Sauvignon. A Pinot Noir is like a more thin skin grape, and a Cabernet or like a Syrah or something like this is more a thicker skin grape. Okay. And so that skin contact when you're pressing the grapes, um, that maceration that's going to happen. Um, that's where you're going to get the tannins from. You can also get it from the stems, from the seeds. You've bitten the grape seed before. Yeah. I mean, this is that same sensation. Yeah, right? for sure. That's exactly It's right. like it sucks all the liquid out of your, yeah. Uh, yeah. Out of your mouth. Yeah. And some are like overbearing and like, mm -hmm. you know, some are really up in the front. This is a little bit, um, you say front, I feel it up, up top. Mm -hmm. These are kind of like chewy, <laughs> like chewy tannins, yeah. like they're gripping to the side of your, your mouth. Where, yeah, yeah, where, for where sure. Some you, some you won't, you know, like I feel like when you get those real big, big, big cabs, they kind of just like dry out the front and, and, and down the tongue. But this is nice. It's nice and well-rounded. It's balanced wine for sure. It's nice and dark. It's got a good garnet color to it. It's nice. Yeah. Question. Do you guys ever do any um, wine tastings at 1818? Because if not, you definitely need to. Yeah, so we have the wine locker members that we have downstairs. And mm -hmm. so we'll do wine tastings for them to be able to purchase stuff and put it in their lockers. And then we've done some that are at no cost or at some cost to the public as well, that they kind of come in and piggyback with those. So we'll generally bring in a, uh, a couple of our reps and they'll taste some stuff for their portfolio. You mm -hmm. know, so they'll put, you know, sometimes 20 wines out there and you're you know, palate can get a little bit scorched. Wow, yeah. Make sure you spit when you taste some 20 wines because yeah. even at one ounce pours, it's a lot. For sure. Yeah, we do. And uh, that's been a good, I think, way to kind of build um, some community within the restaurant. You know, mm -hmm. I remember the first one that we did and, you know, I think we had about half the wine locker sold and everybody kind of got to meet each other. And then, you know, the second one, all the lockers were sold. Everybody's friends. There's group text. What time yeah. Is yeah, I mean, it was a lot of no, fun. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. So it's a nice community builder for, you know, yeah, that's my, cool. my favorite thing about it for sure. Very cool. So anything else we should know about this? No. I mean, and again, what's the name of it? I can't even, I don't even want to try and you say it so quickly. And so fun. this is from uh, Cote de Rhone, right? So we're in the, the Rhone Valley. This okay. Is, uh, yep. Yeah. It's nice. I'll let you have the honors. And what's I this, like what's this one? Well, this is for yours as well, right? I know, but I brought this from home. 
So we are Chateau Cura, Swing the Grape. So this is going to be in the left bank of Bordeaux in France. Um, on the left bank is generally where your, you know, Cabernet Sauvignon reigns supreme. Mm -hmm. um, the alcohol percentage in cabs coming from the left bank in Bordeaux are usually going to be lower than what they are um, in the States. And uh, they're not obviously using American oak when they're, they're aging their wines. They're using uh, French oak, uh, sometimes French neutral oak. Sometimes they'll just put chips in to, you know, have a little bit of oak flavor in there. Yeah. The fruit's going to be a little bit more restrained and it's grown on this like a uh, uh, really gravelly environment. The soil is totally different, you know, from, from what we have. Maybe Paso Robles would be the closest thing you could compare that to in, in California. Okay. But anyways, so... Yeah, it's going to just have a totally different expression. Yeah. Um, there's something you probably, I haven't smelled this yet, but, mm -hmm. you you know, as you smell this wine and you taste it, um, uh, this is going to have a, a good marker kind of like this will mm -hmm. as far as uh, there's going to be that one thing that sticks out. And just think of... It smells very interesting. Uh, yeah. So think of pyrazines. And when you say pyrazines in wine, yeah, what you, is that? you're thinking of like um, greenery like green pepper or grass. So for white okay. wines, you'd be thinking Sauvignon Blanc. You could think like jalapeno or smoked green bell pepper. This has a definitely more earthy tone, right? Yeah. Than, than those California then, And cats. this one, again, spicy, completely out. Of, and I know that you're comparing it to other things, but for me, it's interesting because all these are so different. Yeah. And, and not just how they taste, but how they smell just everything it's interesting yeah yeah definitely a, a totally different game and uh, across here i'm probably like everyone else we're not used to drinking four different kinds of wine at once right we it's just one so you don't really think much about it but they have the have the contrast is very interesting to me yeah so when you taste that really swirl around that bell pepper is going to jump right out at you yeah yeah it's interesting yeah there it is. I've never had wine that tasted like that. Mm -hmm. And I know this is mine, but again, I, I bought this with the idea of trying something new. Yeah. So uh, again, I think this is $25, $30 a yeah. bottle. It's, it's not there. anything crazy. Yeah. Um, it's that it's that new, new that uh, American oak that you'll age Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot in that kind of masks that okay. piercing flavor, you know? Yeah. If you, if you don't mask it in some sense, it can be overpowering. You know, I've had some wines that are just, you know, not in balance because that flavor just kind of outdoes everything else. So what, what would be good uh, food to pair with this? I mean, a slab and a cab all day. Yeah. A slab of red meat for sure. All right. Nice. I like it. Yeah, you can't beat it. Mark's uh, I'm, I'm the guy that bugs Mark. You know, you, you have some people that have a truck. So anytime <laughs> you need them, you need help like move in furniture or something. What do you do? You call them every time I go into total wine and more, not every time, uh, but I'm known to reach out to him and say, Hey, what do you think? And because this is his thing, he loves it. Yeah. He helps out. So. Well, if you're looking at really high quality stuff and you want to like, you know, branch out, you can get Grand Cru's, you know, from Alsace. The Pinot Gris for the, the Riesling that they have there for like a ton of them for under 50 bucks, you know, mm -hmm. even under $30. You can get Grand Cru's where if you're going to get a Grand Cru Pinot Noir from Burgundy, you know, you could be spending $500 to five grand you know yeah no, yeah, yeah. yeah nobody's doing that no, no. well no, i'm not no not me either <laughs> not so, metro east illinois yeah no no i think that's a little this bit this is good it's interesting i mean yeah. I, I this is and this is a good way to, to figure out what you like with wine is to get a bunch of different things and try them all for sure i gotta and i can't help but think like how cool would it be if people do this so it's not unique but just have a have a group of your friends over and just do a, a blind wine tasting yeah and just figure out, you know, what it is everyone likes. You might be surprised, and you might find that while you uh, have told yourself you love that fifty-dollar bottle of X Y Z, maybe that ten buck is, uh, yeah. is what you actually appreciate more. Yeah, I think we're in a time right now where there's so many value-driven options for kind of all the commodities that are out there, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, um, wine's one of them for sure. So one question, not to put you on the spot. Yeah. Uh, how is how do you think uh, the coronavirus, the shutdown, you know, as Americans, we have a tendency to focus on the shutdown here in the United States, but the reality is it's happening everywhere. Yeah. How is that likely to impact uh, the wine world? Yeah. I mean, it's obviously not going to be immune from it, right? Yeah. Um, restaurant sales are 
obviously come to a screeching halt. Yeah. Uh, from the reps that I've talked to, though, retail has has kind of swallowed up a little bit for them. Um, but I think that's going to affect um, the imports that we're bringing from foreign markets as far as that really fine wine. You know, mm -hmm. there's a whole plethora of things that are available um, only in restaurants that aren't available in, you know, kind of the big box wine stores that are right. out there. Right. And, you know, that's the, that's the tough thing. You know, how are they going to, how are they going to weather that storm and, and overcome it? Right. Mm -hmm. um, because this puts a, this puts a, this puts a hold on it in a big way. Yeah, I mean, you have a, you have a, it's basic supply and demand, right? Yeah. You have a massive demand crunch. Yeah. Uh, supply is not changing. Yeah. So by definition, yeah. prices should go down, right? Yeah. Well, like everything. Yeah, it should. We'll see. Yeah. I think there's a few regions that are to totally out of touch, you know, like True. looking at, you know, Bordeaux and Burgundy. I don't think those prices are ever going to come down. All right. So what do we have next, Mark? Well, we're on to wine number five. We said number we five. Do four. We're doing we're doing five. So we have this uh, Mio Camusé. So this, sorry, what is that? Mio Camusé. It all just flows off your tongue, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> being from Canada, I had to take French. Okay. So anyways, <laughs> this is a uh, Pinot Noir from, from Burgundy. Mm -hmm. So we're in, uh, within the Cote d'Or, which is in Burgundy. In the south, you have the Cote de Bone. In the no north, you have the Cote de uh, Nui. That's where Pinot Noir is basically grown. Um, so you have a lot of really good like uh, limestone that they grow their grapes in there. Yeah. Um, those are the only two grapes that basically come. So if you ever get like a red Burgundy, it's Pinot Noir, and a white Burgundy, it's uh, uh, Chardonnay. That's it. OK. There's nothing else Okay. You, you're going to get from there. So um, if you look at this compared to, you know, if you have a little bit of that, um, well, the, you, you can see the difference in color. Uh, oh, you say you that, like for you, it's this obvious. One. This is lighter. This, this, this one? one? Yeah. This yeah. Is Pinot Noir. Yeah. 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 yeah so there we're With that said, that's, to me, that's a perfect example of, to you, it's like, oh, you can definitely see the color. I'm like, uh, kind of. Yeah. Well, but that's because it's just your thing. You're the expert. Put right? this beside yours now. I think you'll be able to see it over there. Yeah, this one is lighter, but it's yeah. like, you know. Yeah. It's yeah, it's 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 lighter. Yeah. Yeah. So, so is this high in alcohol content? Uh no. Higher? No? Okay. No. Um I'm gonna say it's, you know, or you know, moderate plus alcohol. You know, it's not low for sure. Uh -huh. But I think we're probably if I'm gauging, I'm gonna say thirteen five. It's it's gotta be on here somewhere. Where's the alcohol content? It might not be on here. Ooh, thirteen. That was close. Look at you. Yeah. I'm just showing off now. I know. So, yeah, more of a thin skin grape. This is going to really give you that like barnyard smell. Barnyard smell. smell. So, if you've ever been into like a into like a horse paddock before, yeah, yeah, you're getting that. You're getting like button, yeah. button mushrooms, like turn soil, like a wet kind of like forest thing going on. Yeah, decaying leaves. Yeah, this is this is a this is so specific. I it's like a hallmark it. though of uh, Burgundy Pinot Noir. So can I say that we started with a Riesling that tasted chemically? We did. I'm sorry, it smelled chemically um, tennis ball. Yeah, and now we're to now we're moving to something that is yeah. smells like decaying leaves, like a barn. And yeah. I'm not poking fun. Like it's yeah. awesome that you you are so specific about it. I love it. Yeah, it's um, and when you say it, I'm like, yeah, I see it, but I would have never thought that. Yeah. Well, I mean, once you start rattling those things off and you taste them enough, it just kind of jumps out. It's just different. Yeah. So, what do you taste? You do it again. I don't know. I'm going to guess that you're going to say something that's going to make sense to me, but. Is your mouth raining? No. No. It's sweet. I feel like it's sweet, definitely sweeter than than this one that which had a peppery taste to it. Yeah, not so. I would not confuse the sweetness that you're thinking of with just the fruit. Think of sweet being like in the you know front what? of your mouth. Like yeah, it's you, not in the front. It's yeah. definitely in the back. Yeah, I'd definitely in the back and then my throat around right. here. Yeah, so you're getting a lot of like a you know a good hallmark for um, Pinot Noir from Burgundy is like red fruit, right? Okay, um, strawberries. Cranberries, raspberries. Like yeah. This is just the, the, the permanent marker kind of for that grape, you know, yeah. what you're thinking. And it's um, the flavor from what you smell is a more restrained for sure. Whereas when you're, you know, smelling that California cab and you drink it like it's a big, like fruity wine, mm -hmm. where this is like, it's a little more held back, 
for sure. It's like almost like yeah. a meal in yeah. itself. Is that fair? For for, for me, like a, a cab is. Oh yeah. 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 yeah it's a big, big, yeah. big one. Yeah. I, I like this. Mm -hmm. Honestly, what's funny is that these all, again, side by side, not used to doing that. They're all very good and amazing, but so different at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. There's a, I mean, and that's the, one of the things that's the benefit of doing this is there, you know, people who are like, I don't drink white wine, right? You could probably have had bad white wine and then it's the only wine you tried. So you never want sure. to try it again. Right. Um, you know, I know a lot of people don't like Italian wine because it has something like a, you know, it's like a volatile, like acidity to it and it almost tastes spoiled, but that's like a, uh, it's a marker of good Italian wine, hmm. but it's meant to be, it's really acidic Italian wine. And a lot of Americans don't like it because it's not like just drinking wine, right? Like it's meant to be had with food. Like yeah. for sure it's food. So wine. he, yeah. Mark has told me that before that a lot of American wines are really meant to just drink. Like you're going to drink beer or whiskey or whatever. Um, you know, as Americans, we don't, we don't think of a beer as being paired with something else typically. Obviously in the craft beer movement that's yeah. happening. But for most of us, including myself, we don't, we don't do that. But I know you've said in the past, French wine, Italian wine in particular, they're made specifically to be paired with a, a yeah, food. Is more, that true? They're, yeah, they're more, they're more food-driven wines. For yeah. Sure. You know, like you're going to get like the best, uh, like we were talking about before, you know, um, wine that has grown next to the cuisine where it comes from. You yeah. Know, those are going to be your, your best classic pairings and it's going to bring up. Can I almost, so, so I don't know if this is, makes any sense but uh, to you or anyone, but does it make sense to me? Americans are more of like confident, I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to drink what I want to drink, yeah. right? So it makes sense that we're the, we're the ones that just drink what we want to drink and don't really care about what food it pairs with versus tradition uh, and, and tradition for a very good reason, right? Hundreds and thousands of years in Europe. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, for that sure. analogy kind of yeah, yeah. Not analogy, but reasoning for why we are the mm -hmm. way we are. Yeah, you know, but our wine though, um, in the '70s, there was something called the Judgment of Paris, where they blind tasted some American wines that they brought over. Yeah, um, and you know, they won two divisions that they were entered into. Really it caused a massive, massive upheaval. You know, so I believe it was the uh, Chateau Montalena and then uh, Stag's Leap were the two that were entered. Mm -hmm. It's been a while since I reviewed that fact, but yeah, that yeah. caused a massive uproar for sure. All right. So, uh, Mark, thank you very much. Awesome. Appreciate it. This was fun. Cheers, Mike. So thank again, just trying to have a little fun with everything going on and, uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something and hopefully, uh, you're going to go out and try some new wines for yourself. So thanks and have a great night. Awesome. See you.